All right. What a fantastic morning. It is Wednesday. I'll tell you why it's fantastic, because James is here, Ben is here, Candy is here, people logging. Richard's here this morning, ready to start the day right. Joe from Brookings is here. Joe Glassroot is here this morning. Joe, great to see you this morning. Sandy is here. Everyone's logging in this morning on day three. Jackie is here this morning. Good morning, Jackie. I wonder if your sister Jennifer's joining us this morning from Florida. Let me know if she is. We'll, we'll give a shout out to her. Megan, good morning. Great to see you this morning. All right. It is day three of our prayer week. It is Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Wherever you are, whatever time of day it is, I am back in central time, 8 a.m. live this morning, uh, a little easier than 6 a.m. Had a great time in Southern California. Lisa, good morning. It's great to see you today. Nancy and everyone logging in on this amazing Wednesday. We've been talking about prayer since January 1st, improving our prayer life. We've been talking the last few days about prayers of declaration. A prayer of declaration is when you declare in your prayer the truth of Scripture. In other words, you simply weave into your prayer or, or tie into your prayer or include in your prayer the truth of God's Word. So you may pray a Scripture verse. You may pray a, memory, a, a verse from memory. You may read a verse and pray it. That's fine. Good morning, everyone that's joining us today. All right. So we've been, Jesus said this, when you pray, you need to get a picture of God in your mind that's bigger than your problem. That's why in Matthew 6, 9, Jesus said, when you pray, pray this way, our Father in heaven. In other words, you have this picture of a God that loves you, cares about you, wants what's best for you. And then he says this, hallowed be your name. Your name be set apart. Your name be exalted in the nations. Your name be be glorified today. He said literally, good morning, Erica. Good morning, Vana. He said, pray. Good morning, Bill Hofer. He said, pray the names of God. The, 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 the name of God is his character. It's his nature. And there are dozens of names of God in scripture. And we've been looking last few days at the compound names of Yahweh or Jehovah. Uh, in the Old Testament, there's, there's several compound names of Jehovah. Moving to the New Testament, Jesus, remember Jehovah, Yahweh, is I am. That's the name, the, the Hebrew covenant name, I am. And so when we come to the New Testament, Jesus says seven times in the book of John, I am. I am, and we, we mentioned a couple of these. I am the bread of life. I am the door of the sheep. We're going to look at a few more. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the vine. You're the branches. Today we're looking at the, another uh, Jehovah name of God that Jesus uses in the New Testament, and it's this, I am the light of the world. How many of you have heard that this morning? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. What does that mean? Why does Jesus say, I am the light of the world? Well, light has always been associated with seeing or understanding or having something revealed. Light reveals things. Light helps us to understand things. Jesus shows, uh, illustrates this by healing a blind man. We're going to read the story this morning in John chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus said it was neither that this man sinned nor his parents, but it was so that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me as long as it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. Verse 5, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and applied the clay to the man's eyes, the blind man. Uh, and, and he said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went away and he washed his eyes, he washed the, 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 the dirt off of his eyes, and he came back seeing. So Jesus heals a blind man, demonstrating who he was as the light of the world, right? Jesus is saying, I'm the one who gives sight to the blind. I'm the one who removes blindness and darkness. I'm the one who gives spiritual light to people. Jesus reveals God to us, and he reveals God's truth, all right? So, 
Jesus opens our eyes to spiritual reality. That when Jesus says, I'm the light of the world, what does he mean? He means he sheds light on our lives spiritually so we can understand spiritual truth or reality. He helps us understand or see who God is. Jesus casts light on the very nature of God. In other words, we know, we know what to do and where to go because Jesus is casting light on our path. Jesus is showing us the way to go. So, so he gives us spiritual direction. Let's look at a couple other scriptures this morning. Psalm chapter 8. Verse 30, I'm sorry, Psalm 32, 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. What is, Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. That means I will counsel you. I will teach you. I will instruct you. I will show you what you are to do. How many of you need spiritual instruction today? Jesus is the source. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Follow me. I will show you how to live. I will show, I will help you understand spiritual truth. I will help you understand who God is so that we are not deceived by the darkness. Satan comes with darkness to try to deceive us. Let me show you another verse this morning. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 17 and 18 says this, You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on your guard so that you are not carried away by the error of undisciplined or unprincipled men and fall from your own steadfastness. Instead, grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory. So you're not led astray. So you're not deceived. So you're not fooled by darkness. Jesus is the source of spiritual light in our lives. Jesus keeps us from deception by casting light on darkness so that we can see truth and we can see spiritual reality. So the first thing is, he opens our eyes to spiritual truth. He sheds light on our path so we know what to do and we know where to go. And he helps us understand spiritual reality. The second thing is, he opens the eyes of the spiritually blind so they can be saved. Now, the blind man, Jesus t takes some clay and spits on it, rubs it in his eyes, says, go and wash in the pool. He does. Jesus gives the blind man sight, illustrating that Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus helps blind people see. Jesus helps spiritually blind people see. Okay, Who in your life is spiritually blind? Who in your life does not know Christ? Who in your life who in your life needs the light of Jesus to be sh to be shown into their hearts so they can understand that Jesus is the way of salvation so they can be saved. Here's what I want you to do this morning. If you know someone today and I hope you do in your life that that doesn't know Jesus that that has not yet had Jesus revealed to them, the light of the world revealed to them. Throw their initials up on the screen this morning cuz we're going to pray for them today. If you have someone you care about that doesn't know Jesus, Throw their initials on the screen. Because here's what, here's what 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 6 says. If our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving. What has Satan done? He's blinded the minds of those who don't believe in Christ. So they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but we preach Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as bondservants for your sake. For God, who said, light shall shine out of the darkness, is the one who has shown his light in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. What does God do? He shines the light of Jesus into our hearts so we can know the glory of Christ. Hey, so let me tell you right now, friends, there are initials going up on the screen. I want you to take a moment. These are people that don't know Christ. I want you to pray for them. But just say, hey, Lord, Erica wants A.E. I don't know who that is, but you know, we pray the light of Jesus would be shown in life. Jessica wants R.T. and W.D. Linda wants D.B. today. Dave, Dave Munson wants B.W. and L.W. He's praying for them. Tony Snoozy put a whole list of people up there this morning. Jen Ackerman, same thing. I want you to take a few of those. Say, God, shine the light of Jesus into their heart so they can see the face of Christ. They can see the glory of Christ. They can know Christ and be saved. Look at all the names, all the initials going up on the screen this morning. That's music to God's ears that you would pray for them, that you would say, God, give them light, spiritual light. They're walking in darkness. 
They're, they're blind to spiritual truth. But we're going to pray this morning for them, friends. Every initial going up on the screen. Jesus, we declare this morning. Say this with me. You are the light of the world. Just say, Jesus, you are the light of the world. You came into the world to cast light upon the darkness and deception of Satan, to open the blind eyes of those who don't know God. So, Father, we pray today, every one of these names going up on the screen, their eyes would be supernaturally open. Their hearts would have the, the light of Jesus shine in them. They would become suddenly aware that Jesus is real. They'd suddenly realize that they're walking in darkness and sin and condemnation and that they would, they would repent they would turn in their hearts that you would send other people into their lives today, Lord, that would share the love of Jesus with them, share the gospel of truth with them today. Lord, we're asking for salvation. We've been praying for some of these people for years. We've been praying for, for some of these people our whole lives, and we're praying that today might be the day of salvation. Today might be the day of redemption. When you break their hearts, when you reveal truth, when you bring Jesus into their hearts and minds today. Lord, we cry out for mercy. We cry out for repentance. We cry out for a change of heart in their lives today. In Jesus' name, you are the light of the world. Shine your light on their hearts today in Jesus' name. And everybody said in unison, amen, amen, amen. Hey, friends, here's the good news. Your friend, your family member, they might be walking in darkness but Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He's shining his light on their hearts so they can know the glory of Jesus. We got to keep praying for him, friends. Time is short. This world is winding down and we've got to just get as many people into the kingdom of heaven as possible. You just won the day, friend, because you interceded and prayed for somebody that's walking in darkness. It's Wednesday, day three. Have a great day. Win the day and we'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless.